Good evening, viewers and listeners. Welcome to Beyond the Headlines for tonight. It's Monday, the 11th day of December. For some reason, I almost said November. You know, I'm, I'm so not prepared for Christmas as yet, but nonetheless. Um, welcome to Beyond the Headlines, and this evening, we are talking cricket. I've got with me in the studio three goodly gentlemen. To my extreme left is Mr. Patrick Luizon. He's the acting manager at the National Stadium. Uh, to his right is Assistant Commissioner of Police Vanny Cohen, my good friend, and to Mr. Cohen's right is the Secretary of the Grenada Cricket Association, Mr. Kerry Frank. And joining us via our Zoom platform is a representative from the Grenada Tourism Authority, Ms. Nikoyan Roberts. Lady and gentlemen, welcome to Beyond the Headlines. Thank you. Lovely. Um, we're talking cricket tonight, all right? After a long hiatus, Grenada has been awarded two international cricket games again. And um, I'm so very excited about these two games that we've gotten, one on Thursday and one on Saturday. Um, why I'm so excited? West Indies just whooped England. <laughs> and um, as we were saying before we went on this, to the set, West Indies go by, you know, by the wave. They're in a winning streak now, so we expect them to give England a black wash. But before we get to that black wash, we have to look at all the logistics that are in place as it relates to hosting of the two events. So um, I'm going to start with Mr. Frank, a representative from the Cricket Association. And how prepared are we as a nation for, well, from the Cricket Association standpoint, but from, from a nation standpoint, how prepared are we? Well, good evening. Uh um, to you, Gordon, and to all our, our viewers. I think um, we are quite confident that we are in a good po position preparation-wise. Um, earlier on today, we had a meeting of the NOC where we are able to go through some of the various areas of the uh, preparations, and uh, from all indications, we are about, um, I would say, about 90, 95% there. It's just to um, basically um, welcome the teams and the um, officials coming in on uh, Wednesday, and once they are on island, um, it's about activating all the plans we have been making um, diligently for the last um, a few months in anticipation of those two matches. Um, it's a big moment for us. Um, it's the first time um, in recent history and that I can recall that we've hosted international cricket so late in the year in December, and it's so aptly titled "We Home for Christmas." And the West Indies looking to bring some uh, Christmas chairs, season yeah. chairs here for City Caribbean and um, England again in tongue. It's always a nice feeling when England comes to tongue. So we have done what has been needed from both a GC level and at a national level to make sure that all systems are in place to have two um, fun, exciting matches in a safe and secure environment. I'm, I'm glad you ended on that note, um, secured environment. Here's where my good friend, Assistant Commissioner uh, Vanny Cohen comes in. From a security perspective, logistically, how prepared are we? Well, we can't be more prepared. First, let me say good night to your listeners and your viewers. Um, we can't be more prepared than we are now. Um, we need to know that we take those assignments very seriously, whether it's cricket, football, international events. We always give 100, 110 percent, and, and um, there is no exception here. We have been planning for this now for the last couple of weeks. Um, the machinery are in place. There are a number of expectations that people can, you know, be prepared to have at the stadium in terms of searches. I'm sure we're going to delve a little into that as the program um, go forward. But all of the security arrangements and all of the security partners that normally works with us, private security and what have you, those have been contracted. The plans are in place. We're just waiting to roll off now. Okay, lovely. So we'll get more in detail. Uh, from the stadium's perspective, uh, uh, how ready is the stadium itself, the physical facility, Mr. Luzon? All right, good night again to the viewers. Um, well, as Kerry was alluding to earlier, um, today in our final meeting with the NOC, we showed that we are about 95% ready um, as we talk about the physical structure of the facility um, in terms of the pitch and field. In fact, only today the Westerners cricket curator came in and he was pleased with the preparation. Um, they would have did the selection of the wicket that they would be playing on today and um, everything is in place um, in terms of the PMO or the players area 
Um, all the facilities is up and ready. Um, some of the people from Cricket West Indies came in, even was surprised of our preparation, and knowing that our stadium is about 16, 17 years old. And we were able to still roll out a good facility for them, right, with little or no problems. So we are in a good position now. We are ready and just arrived within the arrival of the teams so that we could roll out what is expected of us. Lovely. So we, we have Cricket Grenada in terms of the cricket. We have uh, the security aspect of it. We have the physical structural aspect of it. All that is left is getting people to come to the stadium now. And here is where Miss Nikoya and Roberts comes in from the Grenada Tourism Authority. Miss Roberts, good night. Good night, Mr. Gordon, and to our listening and viewing audience and my esteemed colleagues on the panel. We are very excited to be welcoming England and the West Indies for these two T20 international matches in Grenada and delivering on our promise of having a spicy pitch. We have been doing all in our powers to ensure that ads are on the air, that we let people know that they can purchase their tickets online, that they can go to the box office beginning today at the stadium between 8.30 and 4.30 to purchase tickets. And we have been working with our teams at the GTA at the Grenada Turns 50 Secretariat so that we can have the right welcome scenario at the airport. We can have the right entertainment when the teams, the fans, all of the visitors um, are coming into Grenada and then outside. We can have our private sector partners doing tastings. It is a grand affair. It is sports tourism at its best, cricket, lovely cricket. And there are a number of commercial opportunities that should not be lost while the teams are here this week. Lovely, lovely. So I'm coming back to, to where we started. I'm coming back to Mr. Frank. Now, as fans, supporters of either West Indies team or England team, all right, we just want to come there and see cricket at its best. The players executing their shots and fielding properly and bowling properly and everything. That's our end of it. From Cricket Grenada's perspective, how challenging is it to prepare for this international event, these international events? Well, um, it is a challenge, yes, but I think for us in Grenada, we have, ha we have a successful template because if you go back to uh, since 2015, this will be the fourth time I believe we'll be hosting England. We hosted them in a test match in 2015. In 2019, we hosted them a couple of one internationals. 2022, we had another test match. And now we have um, two T20 matches. So we know what it takes to organize for England test matches. It is obviously the um, mecca in terms of cricket coming to the Caribbean because of the whole economic um, impact of an England tour with the number of visitors that is coming in and the, be the beauty of that is that it's not only the stadium that the benefits are felt you know um, in, in the periphery of the National Stadium the major um, sh um, uh, areas where you'd find number of visitors traversing, you'd find a lot of traffic in those areas. When the English comes to town, the bars in River Road bus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure our friends in River Road are quite excited for that. So um, the preparation, we've, we've known that the matches have been coming a while and we've started, we started preparations quite early um, for this um, tour. And um, it is just about making sure that what we normally do is in line with what the current reality is with in terms of um, West Indies cricket guidelines, as we know we get and ready to host um, the World Cup in 2024. So they would have some changes in how they're looking to execute things. And we, ha so far from all indications, we are there in terms of our, our planning and we have been in constant dialogue with the stakeholders. And the beauty of it um, for the planning is that um, the, the, the cricket is that, yes, we do have our responsibility with the Cricket Association, but there are many other stakeholders who are on board. Um, for example, at the LOC level, we'd have the Ministry of Health, the um, Royal Grenada Police, force, the National Stadium Authority, and a number of other stakeholders who um, make their contribution towards having a successful event. So for us at the GCA, it's really about coordinating the various stakeholders' interests and making sure that everybody plays their part in, in us pull, pulling off successful matches. Because at the end of the day, the cricket is just... Um, 
much more than having people come to the stadium to participate in it. We understand the importance of cricket in our in our society, yeah. and um, it may not necessarily be the case recently where people are all hyped for West Indies cricket. But there is this quiet um, rumblings when cricket comes to town. Everybody at the last in the last couple of days will be going, where yeah. can I get tickets? What time the match is starting? And they want to be there for the for the festivities. So all of that is taken into consideration in our planning, and I think um, we have been able to. Um, so far plan effectively and we want to ensure that we roll out and roll out um, our plans to make sure that everything goes according to. Right, we just hosted, the region just hosted the CG United 50, um, 50 overs tournament and um, I can't remember if we had any games here but in terms of preparation for that it's one thing but when we have international teams there are certain requirements from ICC mm -hmm. and, and, and so forth. How do you Demanding is it to meet up to these requirements from the ICC and Cricket Western is because it's 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 a it's a vast difference in preparing for Trinidad coming and play against Barbados here when mm -hmm. we have those those guys from the international yeah. community it's it's it's, yeah, it's it, much it, more demanding. It, it is much more demanding. That's why um, I would have alluded to earlier on it's that when we execute we don't execute as a Grenada Cricket Association but it's a whole of country approach. The stadium can tell you that. Um, they would have um, been in preparation mode, um, Mr. Lewis, and what, for the last two plus months. There were no major activities at the stadium, ensuring we get in the outfield um, in a condition that is up to international standards. And if anyone looks at the um, pit pass through the stadium within the last week or so, or the, in the next couple of days before the matches, you will see that it's a massive transformation from what we'd have seen probably early on in the year during around carnival time. It's like probably the first match we've held in the stadium. And we can see from, you know, just the eye test, what you'd have seen from other venues across the Caribbean. I think Grenada's outfield, it's in a much superior conditions, and that's all because of the work that the stadium authority has uh, put in. Um, security, we have with us the Assistant Commissioner of Police sitting in on the LOC and offering his expertise. It's not just because the security, the Royal Grenada Police Force understand what it takes, and they invested one of the senior officers to lead the whole security arrangement for it. So it just shows our interest um, um, as a country in ensuring that we do the right things to make sure that we up to those standards. GTA has been a willing partner for many of the recent um, tours we've had in the Caribbean and they too have the obligations in terms of um, ensuring that the visitor experience is one that is remembered for a while to come and people talk about it constantly and people want to come back um, outside of the cricket to visit Grenada. So um, our work is really made much easier because all the other stakeholders, the government of Grenada, their contribution cannot be downplayed, the Ministry of Sports, Ministry of Health. Everybody has contributed significantly and it's because of all of this we are able now to execute our world-class event. And the beauty of it is that um, it's not just cricket, as um, ACP um, Corwin stated, we host a number of other international events. And if you look at how we do it, it's almost at a similar high level. And it's just about maintaining those standards and making sure that you know we're in line with the changes that is proposed by the um, the ICC and Cricket West Indies. And earlier on today in our meeting, we had an official from Cricket West Indies who sat in our meeting to you know follow along, and he was very, I would say, he was very satisfied with what we had to to offer and it seems that we are on the right track in terms of preparing and executing another world-class event. Okay, lovely. Before I get to the security aspect of it, I want to come to the, to the, 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 the stadium itself. Um, I have personally seen things happen in the stadium that I wondered what's really happening here. I remembered being parked um, in one place at the stadium and I saw a piece of galvanized fallout a couple of months back. Um, but as, as um, Kerry said earlier, the stadium is what, about 15 years old or maybe more? Mm -hmm. So that, that happens. But in terms of getting the physical structure up to par to ensure that when spectators come, they are safe, 
How challenging was that? Okay, it was a great challenge for us, but what happened is that before every event we do a physical walkthrough with the persons involved in the activity. So for example, we had a representative from Cricket West Indies, Cricket Association, the security, and so that we'd have walked the venue and look at all the challenges that we have and all the areas that we have to fix for the event, right? So we'd have bring in um, Ministry of Infrastructure, right, with the engineers and so on to look at the structure, to look at all the areas that need to be assessed and fixed before the event. So all that was done in our preparation, in the preparation, preparatory stage, right? So now it's just to execute, as I say. So we would have did do all the work that was supposed to be done on the, the structure of the facility. Um, of course, yes, there is one stand which is which will be blocked off for the game, right? Because as you said earlier, some governors would have moved out from that area. Okay. So we would have blocked off that area for the game. So tickets would not be sold. Persons will not be able to access that area because the area is blocked off for, for the game, right? And all the other areas will be safe because we are concerned about the, the safety of the patrons when they come to the stadium. Are there any plans in place to remedy that situation? Well, as we speak, the Chinese are on the ground. They are just waiting for the completion of the matches and independence so that they could start the refurbishment work at the stadium. Okay. So they are on the ground now. They are just waiting on us now to hand over the stadium to them for those repairs. Because we also have Carifta right around the corner. Yeah, but Carifta will be down in the Kiryani James yeah, but stadium. stadium so. No, it's not the same stadium. We, we, we play, we're in the stadium. Is, stadium. Is, 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 yeah. well, right. I, yeah. you, you know where I'm yeah. going, yeah. right? Is, is, is the facility and yeah. um, the maintenance and so forth is, is, is imperative uh, that we get that done. Yeah. From a marketing standpoint, Miss Roberts, um, GTA, I know GTA is superb as it comes to rolling out of, of, of events and planning and executing. Um, how challenging has it been thus far? Thus far, it has been a strategic process, engaging our hoteliers to let them know that they can invite their guests who are on the ground to go to the stadium on Thursday, on Saturday, from 1.30 to 5.30 for world-class cricket. We have been working assiduously to get our ads on the air. The um, Cricket West Indies, they will be playing our destination ads. It's not just what is being done this week. Yes, we're expecting a surge. We do have flights coming in, chartered flights coming in on Wednesday. And we will be doing a meet and greet at the airport with our partners on Tuesday and Wednesday. But it is also about the additional sports tourism products like football, like cricket, like rugby. Um, two weeks ago, we entertained 16 international rugby teams, including our very own rugby players from Grenada. And we have also seen the tourism aspect of sailing on the waters by welcoming 93 boats and over 400 sailors coming across the Atlantic. So Grenada has been hosting events, international events, events every month and cricket is one of those events. I want to take a moment to speak about the visitor experience because part of our marketing strategy is the investment of our dollars so that we do the marketing of the destination on multimedia platforms. But when our guests come here, the experience they have must make that investment worthwhile. They must be able to have superb quality service from the time they touch down at Mars Bishop International Airport, the transportation they take to the hotels, to the stadium, all of the events that they engage in, the retail opportunities, the after match events. On Thursday, we will leave the stadium and go down to the vendors market beginning at six o'clock. And that is where we will see drumming and cultural displays and entertainment and live bands and food and drink. And then on Saturday, we go to the pedestrian plaza after the match. Every single thing the visitor experience must make them enthused. And they go out and become ambassadors and marketers themselves and ensure that the investment that the GTA has put into marketing the event is worthwhile. And how, how responsive has the, um, the private sector entities been in, involved? 
they have been wonderful partners. Um, we have been working with uh, Grenada Distillers, Blue Light Gin, Ron Baird Rums, uh, Westerhall rums, um, GCNA in terms of our spices. We are the spice of the Caribbean. And all of the um, <clears throat> private sector partners, some of them have actually been calling us and saying, we'd like to get involved. What can we do? How can we support you? And the strength of that collaboration is fantastic in terms of getting the message out there, building the momentum now because cricket is a vibe, ensuring that we have a fantastic experience over the next few days, and also being able to show the world that people can come back here after cricket and enjoy themselves for independence, for carifta, etc. I mean, you, you just said it there right and a whole thought came to mind you know this little place called Grenada have been you know representing itself so magnificently on the international scene that it, it amazes me sometimes I mean of course like everywhere else we have a little ills here and there but I mean in terms of showing ourselves on the international stage we really you know and I mean there are times we really need to give the kudos where the kudos are due but nonetheless um, we take our first commercial break when we come back I go to assistant commissioner Cohen to talk of security and traffic and other logistical um, approaches that will be implemented so we take our first commercial break we'll be back after this this is beyond the headlines Softweed bathroom tissue with total hygiene? As hygiene and safety have taken center stage, a bathroom tissue is now manufactured with three different technologies to offer the best protection for you and your family. UVC light technology for a safe and effective disinfection process, eliminating 99.9% .9 of microorganisms. Also, production at high temperatures, killing all types of germs and bacteria. And it's pH controlled with delicate fibers to prevent irritation for even sensitive skin. Soft weave total hygiene bathroom tissue. Available in supermarkets and shops island wide. Visit Soft Weave Caribbean Facebook or Instagram pages for more information. can win $150 in electricity credit and five of you can win $1,500 in free electricity. Simply download and keep using the Grenlec app. Welcome back viewers and listeners to be on the headlines for tonight Monday the 11th day of December and tonight we're talking cricket my guests are Miss Nikoyan Roberts representing the Grenada Tourism Authority Mr. Lewison representing the Stadium Authority and uh, Assistant Commissioner Vanny Cohen representing the IGPF and of course Mr. Kerry Frank representing the Grenada Cricket Association before we went to the break um, I promised that we are going to touch on the security details and um, traffic and so forth. So from the RGPF's standpoint, what do you have to roll out? Well, let, let, let me start by saying this. Um, there's this misconception all the time 
that whenever there is something in the stadium or standards are that high or we are so rigid, I think Grenadians need to understand that when we police an event, we don't police the event for IGPF. We police the event for the organizers of the event. And in this case, Cricket West Indies have their own standards that we that we, we meet and you know we deliver the expectation that um, that they have. But in a general sense, it is the duty of the IGPF, it is the intention of the IGPF to ensure safety and security at the stadium, to ensure that everybody who come into the games are safe and secure and that they're adequate parking and that there is proper traffic management in the environs and, uh, and you know in the surrounding area of, um, of the stadium so having said that let me just roll out some of the traffic management plan that we will be employing for for these two days 14th and the 16th of December let me first start by talking about entry entry into the stadium so generally vehicular traffic entering the National Stadium will do so at the ring road area from the Cherry Hill direction only with their one one exception so I want to make that clear everybody coming into the stadium to look at the games except the VIPs will enter through the Cherry Hill side of the ring road into the q and James Athletic Stadium parking lot the exception to that is VIPs dignitaries and, and other match officials that will enter on the Humback Bridge into the VIP parking so the only vehicular traffic that is coming over the Humback Bridge will be that of VIPs dignitaries games officials so if you do not hold any of this accreditation or passes everybody else enter the stadium to the Cherry Hill side of the stadium into the Kirani James um, Athletic Stadium. Um, have, there, is, there will be no vehicular traffic that will come over the Humbug Bridge except for those that I have just mentioned. And, and I want to stress that because I, you know, it, it can back the traffic up if you don't get that information and attempt to come. And we have to tell you that while you're there, everything gets back so very easily, as you very well know. So I, I can't make that point um, enough. Um, vehicular traffic across the Humbug Bridge will be restricted. And, and, and that's the only exception. So that's no that's entry. There's no entry. Vehicular traffic will not be allowed in the following areas. So Old Foot Road in its junction with Locust Street. In other words, you, you're not allowed to come up the PBC side from the Locust Street mm -hmm. direction. You are not allowed to use um, that road. You also not you also will not be allowed to use the Cemetery Hill Road with its intersection with Church Street. So that's the portion of the road that goes down Cemetery Hill into the stadium. Um, that will be restricted. Um, in fact, the traffic will run the other way when I get to the emergency route. That is our emergency route. Um, the ring road from its junction with Mount Rush, public road to the direction of the Humbug Bridge. When you come off Mount Rush, you will not be able to make a left turn onto the Humbug Bridge. All the traffic in the stadium for those two days coming from Mount Rush will make a right turn back into the entrance that they're coming in. In other words, that Cherry Hill part of the road will be both entry and exit for the general public, with the exception of VIPs and dignitaries that will use the Humbug Bridge for entrance. Um, the public parking will be available in the following areas. The concrete car park at the QNE James Athletic Stadium. The warm-up track at the QNE James Athletic Stadium. The dot area opposite that concrete park will also... We believe that there are enough parks there in that general area that can hold most of who um, likely will be coming to the games. In addition to that, should there be a spillover, we're going to move the excess traffic over to the Wesley College ground. Um, you would appreciate the fact that this is a ground that we've been using time and time for events at the stadium. But when it rains, as it is doing now, putting traffic on that on that playing field can severely damage the playing field. Yeah. So we, 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 we're not considering doing that for the start of any of the two games. However, should those designated parking areas be overfilled, we have no choice now. We'll have to use the the playing field no for excess parking. A quick question as you, as you mentioned that um, will the IRGPF be encouraging carpooling? Well you know? not only for cricket but for every event we have at the stadium because we are so limit so much limited parking at the stadium. It would be nice if four, five, six people can leave five of those vehicles home, get into one vehicle and come to the stadium. It makes parking easier. It makes the whole traffic management plan run smoother. And you know it, 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 it gives us more opportunity to be able to have our security plan more more effective on the ground. In in, in, in addition to expecting four, five hundred vehicles having one or two hundred 
management makes it much easier to manage. Adequate park for everybody, adequate security, less vehicles now that we have to pay attention to. And so carpooling is something that we encourage, not only for cricket, but for all events that is staged at the stadium, especially if those events are of a national or international um, standard. Carpooling is something that, um, and I, that we are looking I, I would even like to go further, you know, in everyday life. You have four people coming out from one house coming to work in St. George, you know? Well, I know this is, I don't, this is separate from the topic that we're discussing, but this is consideration that is currently on the table. How do we fix our traffic management system in Grenada? Yeah. Every month, the car boat, the boat that brings vehicles into Grenada, comes into Grenada. Now, twice a month. Right, and there is not very much we can do with the infrastructure in terms of the roads, build new roads, extend roads. Um, our buildings are almost on the edge of the roads, so extending roads um, is almost impossible. So the next best thing that we need to look at is how do we manage traffic? Are there going to be toll? I don't know. I don't have the answer. But those are discussions that have been had in circles that they, they, you know, they need to be had. Will there be toll on, 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 on the road? Will people be prevented from coming into town if you have no, no, you know, no reason to be into town? Will there be some consequences, costs, and otherwise? Those are, are, are not decisions that are made, but those are discussions that you know, begin to be had because at some point, we have to determine what we do to be able to manage traffic on the nation road. So back to the, tra the, the, the traffic detail for the, the matches. Yeah, and um, let's talk a little bit about parking. Um, if you hold a VIP park or VIP pass, your entrance will be over that Humbug Bridge, the river outside Humbug Bridge, making a left turn into the VIP parking, VIP parking area. So that's for VIP, that's for match officials and officials of the, you know, of the, the local organizing committee who they determine who will special passes to park in those areas. We also have some no parking zones. So there'll be no parking will be allowed in the following areas. Melville Street from the Fish Market to Cherry Hill. That whole piece of road from the Fish Market to Melville Street, right up to Cherry Hill, the seaside. There'll be no parking in, in that particular area. From River Road, Puzzles Lumber Yard to what we call Keep Left, Lacquas Roundabout, there'll be no parking there as well. Mount Rush Public Road from its junction with the Stadium Ring Road until you get to the borough of that hill. So from the stadium to Mount Rush until you get to the hill, there'll be no parking in that particular area as well. Um, the National Stadium main entrance away from the Green Bridge, there'll be no, and I, and I think I, I, I need to say that, there'll be no entrance from the, the Green Bridge side of the stadium. There'll be no entrance. And so there'll also be no parking in that particular area. Our emergency route is standard for every event in the stadium that has been um, designated as the emergency route that will leave the stadium, we go up to Cemetery Hill, Church Street, onto the hospital if we, if we need to. Hence the reason why that piece of road from Short Street down to Cemetery Hill is not accessible on, on that day. It's accessible the other way around, the one way from the stadium into the hospital if we need to. Um, we say in all of that, and I know people will say, well, look, people will still violate. That is true. And so I want to sum the one in here and now that our record service will be out for those two, two days of the cricket. Um, if your vehicle gets impounded, there is a fee for that. Um, you'll have to pay that fee before that vehicle can be released to you. And so we know this is Christmas and everybody needs those extra dollars. The to government to, needs it too. Well, the government needs the money, but um, <laughs> I'd prefer the government get the money some other how than, 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 you know, than, than, than our citizens have to give it up yeah. for selfish or, or, or reasons that, that, that are unto us. There are some no vending areas that we have um, come up with as well. So there'll be no vending from the Queen's Park Road, that is by the Lacro Keep Left Roundabout, to the stadium or around the ring road of the stadium. There'll be no vending, absolutely no vending. Um, law enforcement will be on the ground early enough to ensure that shop is not set up, you know, so that we don't want people to come and set up and then we have to ask them to move. We will be there early enough to ensure that um, no one comes in and, and, and set up. So even the folks who, you know, that new little city that's been established in River Yeah, there will be no vending yeah. in that wow. area. Okay. Yes. For these international games, they are, st they are and, and that's, that's the point I, I made when I started earlier on, that we're not policing these events by ourselves. It's not what RGPF1, it's what has now become international standard. Yeah? 
Cricket World Cup 2007, we saw that. You can't be, you know, in certain proximity close to the venue itself. And we have always maintained that. Lower level games, we have allowed it. But when we have international games, as we have in now, the restrictions go in place and we have to manage those restrictions. Let me just quickly run through, at the end of the game, what would be happening. So there are a number of one-way traffic that will be um, instituted at the end of the game. The Humbug Bridge will be used only for VIP coming into the game. But at the end of the game, it will be open now to the general public. So that is going out towards the River Road direction. The Humbug Bridge comes into play. Um, River Road, Public Road in the direction of Mount Rush. So Mount Rush now is going to be accessible to leave the stadium. Not coming into the stadium for the start, but at the end of the games, to leave the stadium, Humbug Bridge come into play, Mount Rush comes into play. Motley Hill direction to San Susi, that is going to be one way. And, and, and these are all geared to ensure that we get people out of the environs of the stadium as quickly as is possible. That we allow no bottleneck. People want to leave, they want to go. And so we've created the avenue for, you know, for, for people to leave. The Ring Road from its intersection with Mount Rush in the direction of the Humbug Bridge. I spoke about that already, so that's 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 going to be one way. Um, there are some security arrangement that are always employed at the stadium, such as everyone holding a ticket can be expected to be such. This is the way we secure um, the patrons, secure the officials, and ensure the venue is safe. There are a number of prohibited items. I mean, those are just, I'm just regurgitating those because over the years, I, I, I want to believe that all of Grenada we know, know what those restrictions are. No firearms will be allowed, and, and I want to camp here for a while to see. We've seen in the past people come to the stadium and ask us to hold their firearms. And we've been saying year after year, time after time, we're not going to do that. What we advise in as well is that you do not leave your firearm in the vehicle and come to the stadium. So here is the advice. If you're carrying a licensed firearm, go to the nearest police station, check your firearm in. At the end of the game, retrieve your firearm from the police station and make your way home. Do not leave the firearm in the vehicle. There are some other prohibited items, you know, glass, glass bottles are not um, accepted at the stadium. So if you're going to make your little whatever, you're going to cook and, and, and prepare to drink, ensure that the receptacles that you're putting it in is not glass in, in um, by, by its make. Large flagpoles, while you know the Caribbean is, 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 is known for the way we celebrate cricket, yeah. you cannot divorce the safety and security issue away from the celebration. So a large flagpole now is a flagpole, and 10 seconds from now it becomes a weapon. All right, bags wider than 12 by 12 by 12. Your bag must be able to fit under the seat that you're sitting on. So those big, large coolers that make it way to the stadium, I, I want to urge here now, leave those home. Find smaller receptacles that you can put your drinks in if you're going to be bringing drinks and ensure that those drinks are not in, in breakable bottles. So those, those are some of the restrictions that you can expect at the stadium. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm wanting to go back to Ms. Roberts. Um, you mentioned something earlier as it relates to from the the landing at Morris Bishop International Airport there will be tasting and so forth um, is the GTA responsible in some way for um, refreshments around the pavilion you know vending and, and so forth Who, whose auspices does that fall under you need to unmute your mic The GTA is responsible for ensuring that quality souvenir items are available to all of our guests while they're at the stadium. If they decide they want to go downstairs, we have some um, creatives that are curating a space so that you'll be able to buy gifts. You know, you want to take gifts home, quality Grenadian arts and crafts, bags, shoes, quality items are available downstairs the stadium for purchase okay so that means vending that falls under GTA? Yes, that's um, within the scope of the local organizing committee. And um, we've had a number of um, vendors who would have um, expressed interest in um, providing um, their services at the um, the matches. And so far, the response has been um, uh, very, very good. And um, most of the stands, we believe, would be adequately um, um, 
catered for in terms of the number of vendors we have in the various stands. Okay, yeah, because um, that is a, uh, that is of critical importance to ensure that they are of international standards. We wouldn't want any, whether it's local or you know visitors getting anything like food poisoning and so forth. It, it will have some very negative impacts on 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 the reputation of of that event. From the stadium standpoint, um, is there anything that you want to highlight? I know you mentioned uh, that area that will be sealed off or blocked off. Um, for patrons who are coming into the stadium, let's say for the first time, is there anything you'd want to highlight to them? Well, um, as um, Deputy Commissioner would have said, that um, what are the prohibited items? So somebody coming for the first time have to know that. What they can and cannot come with. Right? Um, again, you come for the experience. Um, a lot of people now is excited about the posse stand. Um, they will have music and so on. So a lot of people is looking forward to that. And all we expect people to do is to come and be for the best. And we will ensure that maybe Western is get a victory or two victories, <laughs> and that will be good for our people. You're saying, our, our that, you're saying that as though you're having second thoughts. <laughs> I mean, it's a given. Well, yeah, given well, getting well, well, that again, we will just wait to see. Yeah. yeah. Right? Right? So, so the experience, the people coming for the experience who coming for the first time, a lot of the persons may be coming back two or three times before or whatever the case is, so everybody know what to expect when they get to the stadium. And that is the experience you want people to go with, the experience that will be on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A quick question, will there be any difference as it relates to what can be carried into the posse stand? Because you know, the posse stand is that, is, is that, um, that carnival-like atmosphere section. So, is, will there be a difference in in the, the items, not notwithstanding the fact that security has to be at its peak, so we know no firearms and no weapons or and the, the big flags and so forth, but in terms of um, accessories so for, well, for probably we're expecting like the conch shell the the um the horns and and so but the it it goes same thing as for the other stands so for example with the drinking breakable bottles is not allowed in no stand at all in the stadium and so and, and so, as it relates to the size of the cooler it remains the same well, size it remain, to be, it remains you the same fit under your seat? well um in the bleachers we'd have no seats so so it would be difficult for you to come with a big cooler and then it will disturb maybe other persons in the stand so that is why they keep the cooler to the size to make sure that everybody have that standard size so that it does not have much disturbance among the patrons. What guarantee do we have that someone's coming with a conch shell saying that they're going into the posse stand to lively up the crowd and that that conch shell um, happens a in the space of 10 seconds to become, a weapon. Be, become that, that thing that we use to settle an argument as to whether it's a no ball or not. Yeah, and, and that's an interesting question because um, while we understand the, 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 the nature of Caribbean cricket, Security is not taken lightly. I would hate for something to happen in our shows in one of those international games. I've known we have turned people away before with those conch shells. Um, while it lively the game and bring that kind of atmosphere, it's Christmas that we would want to see, we can't lose sight of the fact that what is now uh, uh, an instrument of, of joy and, and can quickly become a weapon. Uh, and so we will make that determination based on who is carrying it. We'll make that determination based on the environment and the atmosphere. Um, there's no hard and fast rule where those are concerned. While security is paramount, um, there's a level, a level of flexibility that we, we, we allow. Um, we want people to enjoy themselves, but at the same time, our major focus is the safety and security of, of, of the general patrons. But having said that, will there be police presence intermingling in the crowds well, continuously? I could tell you this, there are police presence that you will see. And, those and there are police presence that you will not see. That's as much as I would say. Uh -huh. So um, you, may, you may sneak something in, or you may get something thrown over the wall and we've seen that so I can say that openly but we're going to find it yeah. we have in the past and I have no doubt this time and we are going to if the situation could arise where I am bringing in something illicit and I'm saying to you in a plain clothes watch hold on for my partners and it could very well be a police officer and and, and, and we have seen things coming through sources that are legitimate
legitimate. Yeah. Yeah. So we are watchful for those. Um, we've done that in Carnival. We've done that for all of the major shows. We now know the security loopholes that and challenges that the stadium presents, and 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 we are on our A game. So yeah. I'm confident that we'll be able to deliver the, the the type of security arrangement that will make West Indies cricket in England. The patrons and all who come into the stadium proud of us. Want to come back? Yeah. Yeah. From GT um, Grenada Cricket Association standpoint, what are some of the things that need to happen for at the end of both games when a postmortem is being done? The Cricket Association can say this: these two matches were exceptional. I'm, and I'm not talking about the performance of the teams per se. I'm talking about holistic. Well, I think um, it goes back. I think the, the main element of having a successful match is um, the work that we have done with the um, national stadium in terms of the pitch and the outfield. I think we want to ensure that um, um, the curator, Kevin Holas and his team prepares two a wicket at the national stadium that is conducive to show play. It's um, T20 cricket. So I know the fans are coming out there to see um, lots of boundaries, um, spectacular catches, players can dive comfortably um, around the outfield and feel a sense of um, safety in doing so. And so the being able to produce a pitch that produces two exciting matches is one of the things that we'll be um, quite keen on. We have done that in the past. Um, the last the series we hosted England and Grenada, the test match, um, we had a positive result here for the West Indies and the wicket um, got good good um, uh, grades from the um, the ICC and Cricket West Indies, the outfield was good. And it's just about, we also want to create the environment where Grenadian fans can come in and experience, and enjoy two um, wonderful afternoons in a national stadium. You know, it's cricket, it's still lovely cricket, it still has that sentimental value for a number of persons within our country. So we want to ensure that the fans are able to come out in their numbers, enjoy the cricket, and um, even after the cricket, you know, leave the stadium with wonderful memories. Um, we'll be doing a lot by um, initiatives by the GCA, um, the Grenada Tourism Authority, the National Organizing Committee, to ensure that the spectator experience at the stadium is one that would be um, remembered for a while to come. And um, it's the end of the year, it's Christmas right around the corner. So we really want to set the tone that when you finish cricket on the 16th, it's literally one weekend away from Christmas that you know you take that vibes into the festive season. Well, maybe Santa might just be in the stadium. Well, we hope that Santa. <laughs> Um, um, I'm sure we have no objection to Santa um, um, coming down, but I don't think uh, Mr. Cohen, he silly would be allowed to come into no, the stadium. Can, but, um, I have to pack this <laughs> somewhere outside. But let me ask this. I'm going to deviate slightly, staying on cricket. But does it... Um, I'm wondering if I should use the word bother. Is it of concern to Cricket Grenada that we haven't a play on West Indies team at the moment? Um, the, the thing about it is that it's about cycles. And to get players on the teams, we have to put in the necessary um, work at the grassroots, the local level. We do have a number of players who are at that first class level and they're performing quite well. We have just seen from the um, CG United uh, Super 50 tournament that where we've had what uh, six Grenadians who uh, played in that tournament and a number of them done exceptionally well. Um, Teddy Bishop, Johan Jeremiah, um, two of the standout names. So we do have players there who are knocking on the doors and I think once they can, those players continue to um, um, keep at it and put in the efforts, they will get uh, way that West Indies um colors. Um, we've had Andrew Fletcher, uh, the most recent one, who uh, Sherman Lewis, who would have been on an A-team tour recently. So we do have players um, there in, in the mix. And I think, um, as I said, it's about being um, sticking at it. And I, I'm sure within the next year or so, we'll see uh, Grenadians again um, selected on a regular basis to the squad. Um, we, yes, we'd have loved to see a couple of Grenadians in the squad. I mean, I find know, it's imperative. Well, you cannot. Um, <laughs> really um, dictate who plays yeah. in the squad, you know, if you come into Grenada. Because if you go back to, remember, 1999, there was a big f fiasco how oh, Junior Murray was not um, in the squad playing the first match in the stadium in 1999. But um, 
done. It is something that we at the GCA, we always strive for to ensure that more players get opportunities at the top. And we're going to continue to make in those investments so that we can have guys playing in the West Indies colors soon. I'm, I'm hoping to have a, an engagement with Desmond Haynes. You know, he would have to explain quite a number of things. That, that is a, I mean, not belittling you, but that, that these questions I want to ask him, the answers that I would require would be a little above your pay grade. So I, I, wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't put you there. So, uh, so Miss Roberts from GTA, you've been you've been out of the conversation a lot, and um, the, the matches are in St. George's. All right, but it's a Grenada event. Um, how actively participatory uh, do we find people from the outer parishes in providing, um, you know, the, the gifts and services that, that will m ensure that it's an out of the ordinary experience when the guests get here? You know our culture is unique and unlike any other. So we will be having cultural groups like the Tivoli Drummers, Vieco, Shotney, Wild Indian, Jab Jab, all of our cultural characters. They will be coming to the stadium to greet patrons as they come in to see the matches and they will be going around the stadium during the matches so that they can engage patrons. Cricket is lively and the international broadcast Broadcast teams will get a chance to broadcast Grenada's culture to the world. And this is drawing from all of the parishes. And here we are engaging in a conversation that says, you don't just come for cricket. Yes, it's a vibe, but you also return for carnival in August 2024. Um, I do want to take a minute to just say that we are assuring our patrons that the vendors who come to this retail space, they are selling quality items that they have made. And again, they're not just from the St. George's area. They're from all over the island. The GTA will not be responsible for vending bars or lunches or your hamburgers, but we will be responsible for curating a space where quality craft items, jewelry, bags, shoes, anything that is Grenadian and local and well-made excellent craftsmanship this is what we will be displaying in our retail space for all of our visitors to purchase as Christmas gifts and locals who come to the stadium another two weeks is Christmas you can just get that beautiful unique Grenadian gift right there sounds very very interesting but then again the, the, the GTA always does an excellent job at marketing Grenada whether it's local or of, you know abroad you know so I, 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 I am very certain that Grenada will be well marketed right we'll have the multiplier effects and everything people are going to spread the word that hey let's go Grenada for carnival man I went there just for a quick match and look at what I found so we're going back to Grenada for carnival or maybe the 50th anniversary celebrations folks we take another commercial go right ahead wanted to thank the Grenadian people because when we market we make a promise and one of our distinct value propositions in addition to our warmth and our incredible hospitality is the service element and I want to encourage Grenadians to dig deep and provide exceptional service this week to all of our guests so that they can know when you come to Grenada, your dollar stretches further because Grenadians give you superior service, service excellence, and that makes an incredible difference to the visitor experience. I'd like to thank the GTA for, you know, initiating that in the first place. But folks, we need to take a commercial break. We'll be back. And in the meantime, callers, uh, viewers, listeners, this next segment is where you can call into the conversation, 4401. One to five two. We take a commercial break. We'll be right back. This is Beyond the Headlines. It's a happier holiday when every wish and dream can come alive for those you love and cherish with a loan from Nexa Credit Union. Just think of the experiences you could share, the surprises you could gift, and the memories you could make with a little extra in your pocket this Christmas. Our happier holiday loan is about the happiness and warmth it can bring because there's no need to worry. 
unwrap more than just gifts. Experience heartfelt connections and joyous celebrations with family and friends. Get up to $50,000 for home furnishings, renovations, gifts, and more while enjoying easy repayment terms, affordable interest rates, and quick approvals. So, dream a little bigger and enjoy discounts galore at our favorite partner stores. Make your holidays happier with Nexa. Call us at 440-1354. Visit our website at nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. On this Christmas episode of Caribbean Passport, there is holiday cheer from Barbados to the Bahamas. We take in the musical talents of the love movement, the Carters, and Ray Holman. And of course, our taste buds will be satisfied. All this and more on this holiday edition of Caribbean Passport, right here on this station. I want you to control your anger. There's a way to feel better. That's one thing to remember. No matter where you are, you can be a star. Stop and take a deep breath. And relax yourself. Take another deep breath. And relax it. I relax it. Eliminate violence. Welcome back viewers and listeners uh, beyond the headlines talking cricket Grenada hosting two T20 internationals uh, come this Thursday and Saturday it's a uh, day night matches starting 1 30 no, day matches, uh, day matches. Yes. afternoon 1 30 all right yeah it's not ODI it's T20 yeah mm -hmm. so, right good so it's uh, both matches starting 1 30 and um, we'd like to invite you all to come on down to the stage Stadium. The only thing we want you to bring is enough money in your pocket and your best behavior. You know, the real Grenadian behavior. Having said that, the ticket sales, how, how have that been going? What are the pricings and so forth? Um, well, the ticket box office started to sell physical tickets at the, um, today. And um, from, from indications, there was a steady stream of um, patrons coming in to get the tickets. Um, the prices, um, if you want online, you may see a couple of different prices. but but um, what you would find is that there is a local discount, a 50% discount to what is quoted online. Um, so which is what you pay. So a green, um, spectator can afford to pay as little as, I believe, uh, for the members, for the posse standard to be the cheapest level of tickets. Um, those are going for, I believe, $25. Easy? $12.50 US. What? So okay. you can get it for about um, uh, $25 to $30. And then it goes up. The Junior Murray Raw Lewis stand, which is normally... Um, excited uh, has a lot of local f um, spectators then we have the lower bowl of the member stand that is a big stand to the southern end of the ground and then the top end of the um, stadium the top end of that stand is uh, sort of premium seats that's the most expensive tickets um, available there that is going for 60 us while the lower level and the junior more world away stand i believe is just about 37 and a half us dollars which is just about 80 85 about $90 or so. So it's, um, you can get tickets to suit your, your budget. And um, though a lot of people may say, you know, they don't have much, they, they can afford the posse, but I can tell you that the posse stand, normally it's one of the best uh, tickets for value because you're there, the excitement is there, the adrenaline is pumping, you can really affect Aren't you the closest match. To, the, to the field itself? Well, I think most, yeah, the most of the stands, you're closest to the field, but the posse stand, they gave off such a certain level of value that you yeah. know makes them feel that they're the 12th man on the field for yeah, West Indies. <laughs> Um, a quick question, gate receipts, who, who does that go to? Grenada Cricket Association of, or CWI? The, this event is um, a Cricket West Indies event, so the Cricket West Indies are in charge of the selling of tickets. Um, the agreement that is signed, a percentage of that would go, come back to the country. So um, uh, the GCA and 
the Winwards Cricket Board would receive a percentage of it. The Credit Cricket Association would receive a percentage of it. And also my good friends from the National Stadium, the government recipients will receive a percentage of the gate receipts. Um, we can tell you that oftentimes those receipts come, uh, Mr. Luzo can tell you quite a few, some there a couple of years after the event, when the, all the reconciliation is done. Yeah, it takes but, that um, long to reconcile, eh? <laughs> Well, yeah, because I think, so I think about maybe about 60% of the, the, um, the, the cost of the ticket goes to Cricket West Indies, while another 40 percent is to the Cricket Association, um, Winners Cricket Board, and the government or to the National Stadium. Okay. All right. Once again, callers and viewers, you can call in 440-1252 and join in on the conversation. We're talking Grenada's hosting two T20 international cricket matches come this Thursday and Saturday, 1:30 in the afternoon. We know how we behave when cricket is in town. And make it worse, the English are in town. We just gave them a whooping, a, a historical one, 25 years, uh, since we really gave them a, 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 such a whooping in ODI on home soil. So I think the momentum is going to propel the West Indies team into victory on Thursday and Saturday. And not just Grenada. I think I just have the feeling that the guys are all pumped. Um, I must confess that I'm not too very happy with the selection process. But like I said, this is a conversation that I have to have with Desmond and those guys. But um, f f going back to the, the, the security detail, um, I would want you once again to, re re you have a caller? I think we do have a caller. Caller, good evening. Welcome to the program. Good evening, caller. The traffic arrangement, like to enter, if you are a driver entering the stadium, where, and like you're coming from Tempe, where do you enter the stadium for the cricket match? Okay, thank, thank you. you very much, caller. That caller must have been yeah. on my <laughs> brain because it, yeah. that's exactly what I was just yeah. coming to. So, uh, just reiterate that. Yeah, as I indicated before, all entrants to the stadium, with the exception of VIPs and dignitaries, will be at the Cherry Hill end of the Ring Road because parking is going to be at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. So, to answer her question specifically, if she's coming from the 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 Bolio Boca direction, she'll have to pass the stadium, get down to keep level by Lacqua, make that right, turn on onto the Cherry Hill main road and enter the stadium in that entrance, not on the Green Bridge, but in that section of the road closest to Cherry Hill. The public is going to be entering in that area alone. That's the only entrance. Um, and and I, I, I want to clear something up because I know we have released before two entrance points. When we believed that we were going to be having um, the West Hall ground. We had advertised. Maybe, maybe you could just pause. Um, my producer is so versatile that he's showing the actual traffic and, and entrance arrangements on the, on, on the screen at this time. So viewers, you can take a look at this. This is how the entrance to the stadium will be. Coming from the River Road end, coming to the Lacqua roundabout and then taking the right and heading up to that junction with Cherry Hill there. Yeah. And enter yes, and, and, enter, and enter there. And once you get there, you make your way onto the Kiwani James Athletic Stadium for parking. Right? Um, I was indicating before that I probably need to clear up a mis well, not a misconce misconception, but we had put some information out before when we thought we were going to be using the Wesley College ground. And so we wanted to have two entrances. So if you're coming from the River Road direction, we we're going to allow you to enter that humback bridge and make your way to the parking area, the Wesley College ground. But because we are not using the Wesley College ground for the start of the game, we have now changed that, that, that traffic arrangement and have everybody go around to enter that Cherry Hill main road because all of the parking will be at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium and the only way we're going to be using Wesley College grounds is if there is a spillover, if there is excess. And in that, when that happens or if that happened, and we may change what we do on this point of the moment. But I just want patrons to know that the Humber Bridge is not an entrance point to the general public. It's only an entrance point for the VIPs, the dignitaries, and um, whoever else, the Cricket West Indies and the local organizing committee has given special accreditation or special passes to use that ground. Everybody else in the public use that one entrance at the Cherry Hill direction. It is, it is a phenomenon that whenever an event is finished, 
people try to rush out. What measures are in place to ensure that there is smooth traffic on exiting? Right, and that is why I indicated before, most of the restrictions that I spoke of, the one ways and the no parking, those are going to be reversed for the end of the game. So while you cannot enter on the Humbug Bridge from the River Road direction, you will now be allowed to use the Humbug Bridge at the end of the game. Mount Rush is also a road that is going to be accessible, available for use at the end of the game because the intention is to get people out of the stadium as quickly as we can. So the entrance point in Cherry Hill will remain entrance and exit for the duration of the game. So you have that exit route as well. You now have the Mount Rush and you now have the Humbug Bridge. So there will be three exit points out of the stadium, even if there are one entrance point coming in with the exception of the VIP one. So the intention is, as you said, um, people coming in for the game, we are bottlenecked into the stadium, the game is over, people want to leave. So we create an environment for people to leave as quickly as they would want to leave by ensuring that all of the, the restrictions that we put in place for the entrance is now reversed for the exit. Another quick question that I think is very pertinent. After the, the match, when Westernies win, the celebration that will, will ensue, all right, is there a time limit as to say, okay, by nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, all this celebration should end and we're clearing the stadium? Is, is well, we don't generally have a problem with this. We've had instances here before where we won. Um, people will celebrate an hour or two after the game is finished, but there comes a time when, um, you know, if we don't see that we need to bring the curtains down, religions will stay in the stadium all night so until the next, next morning. Yeah. For the next so so um, there is not a hard timeline, but we played by air, see what happens. And the game is likely to finish about 5.30 or thereabout. Um, by 6.30, you will see what happens in terms of the, the post-match presentation, the celebration, as you predicted that, that Westerners will, will win. But I, I don't see us being there beyond 7 o'clock, because there comes a point when we have to say, here is where we shut it off. The music needs to stop at a particular time. People need to leave the stadium. And that time is 7? Because yeah. there is not a hard timeline, but we will, we'll, you know. And, then, and having said that, there is also the events after the cricket, mm -hmm. which on, yeah. on, on, on Thursday would be done at the vendors' markets, mm -hmm. and on Saturday, Saturday they'd be on the, on the, on the plaza, on the plaza, plaza, on the Air plaza, plaza, on the Kyron. Okay. So they have events after the cricket so that people will go to those events. Lovely. But well, let me just hasten to say, you know, saying, um, in the past, um, the DJs have worked very well with us. Even people who come with their, their drums and what have you, when law enforcement say, here is where it ends, we usually have that cooperation from our people. And so I, I'm looking forward for that same cooperation this time around, as we have had in the past. We've never really had an issue when people refuse to leave the stadium. We understand what the party environment and party atmosphere can be at the stadium. But when we say that here is where it comes to an end, there's always cooperation and we able to have a seamless transition out of the stadium. Miss Roberts, I don't want to leave you out of the conversation, not for one. Uh, next time you have to be in the studio with us, all right? Okay, this Zoom thing, I, I don't, you know, but nonetheless, I like, we'll accommodate it. Um, from GTA's perspective, the, the two days, are they well covered as it relates to the provision of um, the souvenirs and all the gift packs and so forth? Before you answer, let me take this caller. Good evening, caller. Welcome to the program. Good evening, sir. Welcome. I talk to the police officer. Go right ahead uh, and ask I, him your question. I come from St. Andrews. Could I use the monkey rush to enter Cherry Hill entry? Uh, Officer, the is, can he use the monk rush? Monk rush. He's coming from St. Andrews. No, he will not be able to use the monk rush for entry. He'll only be able to use the monk rush for exit at the end of the game. Okay. He'll have to yeah, pass the stadium and get to that Cherry Hill come, intersection come to, to be able to get into the stadium. Caller, are you there? Okay, I, I get it, I get it. Uh, so you come through River Road, you uh, take the roundabout by Lacqua, and you head up to Sherry Hill and take that intersection there and head into the Kirani James, um, the, the Athletic Stadium parking lot, right? All right, thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Roberts, in response. Unmute, you need to unmute that mute button again yes as i
think we have very strong collaboration with the private sector to ensure that our retail section is properly orchestrated. We've done our walkthroughs, we've done our videos, uh, we have engaged the stadium management, so they will work with us to ensure that the vendors, um, the artisans, they have the stands to display their goods, they have adequate ventilation, they have adequate lighting. So everything is in place and we are encouraging all Grenadians to be ambassadors, really, really to show how different we are in terms of offering the best service that we can and ensuring that our guests have the most memorable experience while they're seeing international cricket, England versus West Indies on Grenada's very own dubbed spicy pitch. Let me ask this, does any of the matches coincide with any of our cruise ships presence at the port on Thursday and Saturday? We have been ensuring that the cruise ships that are important, we've checked. Um, I know that we have ships on one of the days that we encourage the passengers to come out to the stadium, which is why I keep beating that drum. Bring out your best behavior. Remember, we are ambassadors. We're striving for service excellence. We will have people who are flying into the Morris Bishop International Airport. We have yachties who have just sailed across the Atlantic, and we have about 90 um, yachts that are berthed at Camp Nicholson. We have been singing the song about cricket and sports tourism to those um, crew members as well, so they will be coming along, and we will be shouting as well at the Melville Street cruise terminal so that passengers on those ships can come across the stadium. So whether you're a transportation provider, a vendor, a ticket um, salesperson, uh, a volunteer in the stadium to show people, to usher people to their seats, whomever you are, wherever you are, just bring all of your best games into play and be the best ambassadors we can be. Thank you very much. We do have a caller on the line. Caller, good evening and welcome to the program. Yes, pleasant good evening to the panel. My concern is about double people. The who going out, who want to go out, who don't have, like they not participate in any cricket, it does be a problem for them, even to go out and to come in. Enough times they have activity there and they have problems with the people who live in Dago. I want to know how they will be coming in or going out if they're not participating in the, in the, in the activities. Well, I, I don't... I don't know that we, we, we've had problems with that. Once the traffic arrangement or the traffic management plan is in place, everybody follows it. So even if you live in the area, you follow the traffic management plan. So if you're living in Dabo, entrance to Dabo will be a Cherry Hill. If you're living in Mount Rush, entrance will still be a Cherry Hill. You go around and you can exit out at, at Mount Rush. So the, the only issue likely that there will be is that you will not be able to come across the Humbug Bridge. If you're living in Dabo, all you need to do is just to go around the stadium and enter the Cherry Hill direction. So I don't think we have um, inconvenienced people um, more than we should. We just ask you perhaps for the extra few seconds, having bearing in mind the fact that there's an international games, and, and while we appreciate you might be living in the area, we cannot have two standards. See, because we've been judged by, by what we do for those games. And so we ask, you know, I urge the, the caller and whoever else live in the area, bear with us. The game is only from 1.30 to about 5.30. And if you're living in any of these areas, Areas, entrance is through Cherry Hill. If you want, to, sorry, Cherry, Cherry Hill, yes. And if you want to go back out, you use that same route okay. to go back out. So there's nothing restricting you All right. to do that. We do have another caller on the line. Caller, good evening and welcome to the program. Yeah, good afternoon. Welcome. Yeah, I'm um, just a little idea of concern. I know, you know, in the process with the game, you'll have a lot of traffic. So is it, did, did, they, did they all have a concern, like, to use the close, closest playing field for parking, and you have to go to see buses, take people to the stadium, back and forth. And also, the next thing is, um, and you, we, you never know what could happen, seeing this in an international game. Have you all considered, like, I know you obviously will have an ambulance, 
on the scene? What about putting a fire service, a fire truck on the scene just in case something came up? Just two yeah. ideas that came to my head. Thank you very Thank much, caller. Well, I think Kerry is going to answer the first part. The, 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 the part with the, the fire truck, yeah. that is in place. Oh. It has always been in place for international games. So we don't talk about these things because, it's you know, they've been controlled. You know, it's a given. It's become standard. It's not so much information that the public, well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that the caller is raising it. But those are standard practices. So the ambulance will be there. The fire truck will be there. Okay. Yeah, um, in relation to the pack and ride proposal, we do not have a pack and ride um, a system in place for this match. Um, we basically using this the um, system that we've used for the last few cycles. I think the only time we'd have really used a pack and ride may have been during the World Welcome. Cup, and I'm not sure Welcome. if we'd have done so after. But our method has worked for us in rec in recent times. It's all about fine tuning it, and um, I think one of the additions we have this year is that um, with the work that was done on the in the River project, we can be able to accommodate a few more of the VIP parking in the um, mm -hmm. in that area. They're dealing with for VIP, so um, they sh that area should be able to accommodate all the v VIP traffic. And as the um, assistant commissioner would have noted earlier on, that the arrangements they have in place in terms of the Kirani James parking, um, the car park, the grassy area by the warm-up tracks should be able to. Um, uh, accommodate the other spectators coming in and if needs be then the access to the um, Queen's Park ground too. So for this match um, it was not considered in terms of a pack and ride system. We're going to use what we have been using for the recent matches. Quick question. Um, T20 World Cup is on next year. The West Indies and the USA will be hosting. Are there any possibilities that Grenada will be getting any matches? Has the decisions been made yet? Yeah, the venues have been uh, um, have been decided on. You may have heard recently that um, Dominica would have withdrew their interest in hosting matches because of um, um, the timeline in preparing the um, the sort of infrastructure work that needed to be done. So can it spill over to Grenada? Um, I don't think it would because our stadium would have to go, it's, it's scheduled to go under um, so, some repairs and I think, um, I, I do not want to speak for the authorities, but um, I do not think that we would be considered because we did not, we were not one of the um, countries which in indicated interest prior because of the work we had okay. in the, at the stadium. So most likely those matches scheduled for Dominica may be sh shared among the other um, territories that are already selected those matches. Okay. Well, it's just about wrapping up time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give each and every one of us um, an opportunity to, you know, get your final points across. And I'm going to start with the lady first, uh, Miss Roberts. From the GTA standpoint, what would you like the public to know in closing? I'd like them to know that they can get their tickets online at windyscricket.com slash tickets and that they can also go down to the box office at the stadium this week between 8.30 and 4.30 because we want those stands to be packed. We want when the cameras are on us that everyone can see Grenadians and their guests enjoying the finest cricket in our Grenada National Stadium, including the cruise ship visitors that will be here on Thursday and Saturday as well. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, well again, the same thing encouraging the fans to come out, come out to the games and come out and have fun, which will be clean fun, right? Leave everything else home and come, as you say, with the money in the pocket yeah, and to come and have fun and, and to that enjoy West Indies victory. Yeah. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, that is that is the, that is we well, all been looking. We looking have, we have traitors on board. We say West Indies yeah, 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 yeah. some guys <laughs> laughing. Uh, and, and I just want to yeah. say that to um. I mean, we know we're in a mixed season now with the rain and so on. I don't want that to be a deterrent for persons because we know we are one of the finest quality of pitches in the region, I feel in the region. So even we go back as a series against South Africa, when we were flooded the Friday and the South African packed their bag to go back home. And when they were told they were to come to the stadium, they wonder why. And then when they come and they see the outfield and so they was pretty happy okay. because we do not um, have that A situation with holding water. So whatever situation the game will play. Okay. 
Okay. So we even if it's it a bit delayed, also, yeah, it will, yeah, it will the, we will have the yeah, matches. We will have the matches. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just want to urge patrons, persons coming to the game to, you know, cooperate with us. We have had very good ratings from a security um, point of view over the years, and we're not going to drop the ball now. They're probably going, they're going to be some delays. Um, that has, you know, we come to expect that. And we're promising safety and security. A caller said something, and I just wanted to say that in closing, you may not see or you may not hear or speak about quite a lot of things. But there are quite a lot of planning that goes into these international games. There are contingency plannings that we don't talk about. There are disaster management planning that we don't talk about publicly, but those are in place. Any eventuality, whether it's a bomb scare, whether it's a, you know, a, a natural disaster, those are factored into the security plan. And there is always contingency planning to take care of any eventualities that would happen at the stadium for any of these games. So even if you don't hear it from us on a program, um, you will see it on the ground. Okay. From the Cricket Associations, Mr. Frank. Well, um, it is just for us to continue to um, roll out the plans that we've put in place at the recent, um, in the recent months and to tell the spectators that um, take advantage of the opportunities to get your tickets, as Ms. Roberts would have indicated. Um, prices ranges from the lowest tickets um, into s from $20, go right up to $160. What I didn't mention earlier on is that there is a senior citizen and children discount of 70 5% of the um, advertised price. So that means senior citizens can pay as little as $20 and the most expensive tickets for them will be $80 while persons experiencing the 50% um, discount from $40 to $160. So um, contact the, um, come out to get your tickets. You can also purchase your tickets online. If you don't want to come down, you're still going to get, get the 50% discount. So um, it's cricket, lovely cricket, and we're two days away from welcoming West Indies and England and we're looking forward to seeing all of our local cricket fans and supporters out in the stadium in numbers to bring in the festive season with uh, two West Indies victories. Now you're talking, <laughs> now you're talking. Yeah, you, it's contagious, you're catching it. Um, what's the cutoff point for the age to be considered a senior citizen? Um, I'm a senior citizen. Um, I'm not too sure but I know earlier on you're, you're, you're called a, an age but I don't think that age you, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to call, expose your age on, on national TV, but 75, I mean, come on. It's, 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 it's <laughs> yeah, not evident on my face. If you're 75, then you're <laughs> eligible to get the um, seniors ticket. For the children, it's up to 16 years, and seniors um, 65 and above. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, well, lady and gentlemen, thank you very much for gracing us with your presence here. I know for a fact, I know that we are going to have two excellent games, and you know, dropping the humor aspect of it win or lose we are going out to support West Indies or England but most importantly cricket all right most importantly we're going out to support cricket I know we are going to turn out in our large numbers we are going to be on our best behaviors and conducts and at the end of it all we'll get the good reports because remember that the international press and media will be here and of course it will be a marketing tool for Grenada spice all right so we look forward to the two engagements and at the end of the game may the best team win but we are going out to support cricket of course we know West Indies would win but ladies and gentlemen viewers listeners thank you very much for being a part of the program tonight again uh, our guest uh, Miss Nicole Ann Roberts from the Grenada Tourism Authority Mr. Kenny Lu Patrick Lewison from the Stadium Authority um, Assistant Commissioner of Police Vanny Cohen and the Secretary for the Grenada Cricket Association Mr. Kerry Frank ladies and gentlemen thank you very much and that has been our presentation of Beyond the Headlines for tonight. Have a good night, everybody. I love you. Bye-bye.